Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the orientation for Faculty of Science and Technology. We're very happy to have you with us this morning. We will be starting shortly. Um, feel free to engage with us in the chat. Uh, we have our moderators and uh, we look forward to having a very enjoyable and edifying session today. Morning again, students. Before we get started, we ask that you let us know via chat whether you are in fact hearing us, whether our audio is good. So please let us know in the chat or in the comment section um, whether you are able to hear us this morning. Thank you. Good morning to each and every one of you, our valued new and first year students that are joining in on this faculty orientation exercise this morning. 
I am Gerald Alda, Program Coordinator, the Division of Student Services and Development. And it is my absolute pleasure to be among the first to congratulate you on the important choice that you have made to pursue higher education right here at the UE St. Augustine campus. The choice you have made to hashtag be UE signals your desire to achieve excellence and represents the trust you have placed in us as an institution to help you grow, develop, and achieve both your academic and personal goals. We thank you for entrusting us with this important responsibility and are excited to start this partnership with you. I bring you greetings this morning on behalf of the Division of Student Services and Development and take this opportunity also to officially welcome you to your first year experience at the UWI. Your first year of university is an important milestone in your student life as it provides you with incredible opportunities and unique experiences that are likely to transform the way you perceive yourself and the world around you. With this understanding, our campus has created this first year experience program just for you. So popularly known as FYE, your orientation process will feature a number of dynamic activities, events, opportunities, and attractions, all with the shared purpose of supporting your transition to university life and getting you prepared for the demands and realities of higher education that lie ahead. Now the COVID-19 outbreak may have distanced us physically at this time, but in doing so, we are presented with a valuable opportunity to create an engaged and vibrant online student community and innovatively explore student life with you like never before. We assure you that your orientation needs have been prioritized and that we remain committed to ensuring that you succeed at university. So in addition to your orientation events this year, we have prepared a comprehensive and exciting virtual exercise that introduces you to campus life in eight short lessons. The information shared in this educational exercise will direct you to all the resources and key support services that are available to you as you navigate your first year of study on campus. We encourage you to take full advantage of this orientation resource that can be accessed on the My Learning platform as soon as you enter into your course registration period. So after your participation in today's exercise, we want you to know that your orientation process does not stop here, but it's only just the beginning. We ask that you make the most of your first year experience by staying connected, keeping abreast with all the orientation updates, taking advantage of the opportunities and participating in as many FYE campus activities as you possibly can. So as a first year student, we want you to achieve the highest levels of success. And we want to offer you a fully integrated, holistic educational experience during your time on campus. So today you will be oriented into your dynamic faculty, the Faculty of Science and Technology. And we ask that you get ready to explore the life-changing university experience that awaits. So again, on behalf of the Division of Student Services and Development, I say welcome to your first year experience at the UB St. Augustine campus. We look forward to getting to know you. It is now my pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Donna Dyer, Dean of the Faculty, Deputy Dean of the Faculty of Science and Technology, who will now guide you through today's faculty orientation exercise. Thank you and over to you, Dr. Dyer. Thank you and good morning to you all. And it is very nice to be here with you today. Our apologies that we took a while to start because we had a few technical difficulties, as could be understood. Right now, everything is going to be switched online. And you will hear later from our Dean as he speaks a bit about that. But what I want to do right now first is introduce myself. I am the Deputy Dean of Undergraduate Student Matters. And my office is located at the FST Dean's office, which right now is inaccessible to students. However, I do have an email address which you can use to contact me. And later on, we will talk more about the details of these addresses of the student support desk and the services that we offer. So as we start, what we are going to do is start with some video presentations. First, from the actual Dean of the faculty. I am not the Dean, I'm the Deputy Dean of Undergrad Student Matters. And I would just like to point out here that this orientation exercise is aimed at undergraduate students. So if you are coming now to start your degree program as an undergraduate student, this exercise is for you. Now, the Dean of our faculty, that's the Faculty of Science and Technology, otherwise known as FST, 
His name is Dr. Brian Coble, and he will begin the session, the introductory video, giving a welcome to all first year students. And you should also know that at the FST, we have five departments. And each one of those departments has a head of department, and you need to know who those people are. So after the Dean's welcome address, you will receive welcome remarks from each one of those heads of department. First, Dr. Wayne Goodrich, followed by Dr. Devinda Sharma, then Dr. Rao Gunakala, Professor Judith Gobin, and Dr. Richard Fairman. As they introduce themselves, you will realize what department they belong to. I won't speak anymore. I give way to the video, the welcome video, before we continue with our proceedings. So please be attentive to the words, first of all, from the Dean, and then from the heads of department. Welcome to all our continuing students. We're glad to have you back with us. To our new students, this isn't how we typically get to meet you, but these are challenging times and much is new. The COVID-19 pandemic is serving as a major disruptor to established industries, but it's also serving as an accelerant to medical research in particular. As you might imagine, other fields are also being energized. The entire field of computing and information technology, material science, renewable energy, mathematical modeling, biotechnology and biodiversity studies, natural products chemistry. All of these are currently being boosted by the current pandemic and our responses to it. We offer you robust programs benchmarked against international standards in our core five disciplines of computing and information technology, chemistry, life sciences, mathematics and statistics, and physics. Given the uncertainty of the current circumstances, we are all obliged to make changes in the way we operate. For your safety, and that of your families and loved ones, as well as the safety of staff here at the University of the West Indies. We have decided that all theoretical aspects of your programs will be delivered online only. This will remain that way until advised otherwise and in step with national health guidelines. The practical aspects of your programs will be offered in virtual mode where possible. Otherwise, it will be offered with considerably modified protocols that enable the recommended distancing at all times. In the midst of a global health crisis, you are taking a courageous and wise step to further your education. Your science competencies will be in even greater demand in a modified world and serve as the foundation for whatever direction your future careers prompt. We look forward to continuing to nurture your love and passion for science. I'll close with a quote from noted futurist Alvin Toffler. The illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. I bid you welcome I hope you enjoy your time with us and you find it very educational. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Goodrich. I would like to welcome you to the Department of Computing 
and information technology. Let me just tell you that our main goal here is to provide a quality undergraduate and graduate education in computer science. So, so as to prepare you to compete in the job market and to contribute to the economic, scientific, and social development of the Caribbean. So most of you will be doing a three-year program, and I want you to have a wonderful experience with us in our teaching and learning experience. Thank you so much. Dear students, on the behalf of physics department, I welcome you all to our family. You have made the nice, right decision of joining us and we assure you that you will not be disappointed of your choice. We have highly qualified local and inter international academic staff with wide range of expertise with both pure and applied physics. We have skilled technical staff and well equipped lab facilities to cater for practical need in the area of pure physics as well as applied physics. So at Department of Physics, we are committed to delivering international recognized teaching and research program in pure and applied physics area. So we offer undergraduate as well as uh, postgraduate degrees, which are shown here on the slide. Let me introduce you with my academic staff members. Dr. Sharon Huck, Dr. Ricardo Clark, Dr. Roger Andrews, Dr. Zizat Terry, Shady, Dr. Nikolai Josikov, and Dr. Andrea Joseph. So these are the members of staff, academic staff in the Department of Physics. At Department of Physics, we have four specialized services, service units, which includes X-ray diffraction facility, electronics workshop, electron microscopy unit, mechanical wood workshop here. X-ray diffraction facility is uh, useful for PG studies and research studies in material science as well as med in medical physics, electronics workshop, cater for electronics need, uh, maintenance of equipment across the faculty and in the department. Electron microscopy unit is focused on again to assist research area, research in material science and uh, medical physics area and the mechanical workshop normally help in facilitating prototype for research undergraduate and PG research. We have so many teach we have many teaching laboratories in the department including which includes materials uh, introductory physics labs material science teaching lab, etc. So list is given here on this slide and uh, some pictures uh, from the labs and from the field trips are given here. Apart from uh, teaching, we have also research laboratories in various, in various areas, particularly in electronics and uh, environmental physics and medical physics, etc. So pictures of some of the labs are given here. Physics graduates are prepared not only for the career in physics, but uh, also for many other fields as well. And the possible career path for you are given here. Some of them are given here. You can be petrophysicist, geophysicist, telecommunication specialist, radiographer, university lecturer, school teacher. So there are many career paths. Some of them are listed here. And, uh, some of our students, uh, they have been placed in these institutions and industries, Bureau of Standard, which includes Bureau of Standard, Ministry of uh, Energy, Ministry of uh, Education, Institute of Marine Affairs, Environmental Management Authorities, a few of them. Uh, for administrative support, on this slide, I have given you the phone numbers and uh, email and uh, Dr. Zubina William Paul, she is the senior administrative assistant and she will be assisting most of the time. Uh, further detailed information on the departmental services, departmental facilities, academic staff, research, etc. is given on our website. I thank you very much for joining us in this orientation and once again I welcome you to the family. Thank you very much.
Hi, good morning. Welcome to the Department of Mathematics and Statistics, Faculty of Science and Technology. This is Dr. Sridhar Rao Gunakala, Head of the Department and Senior Lecturer in Mathematics. On behalf of DMS staff, I wish you all success to our prospective students. Thank you and stay safe. And a very, very warm welcome to the Department of Life Sciences. My name is Judith Govin and I'm the head of the department. And I'm here to say to you that you have chosen the absolutely most exciting department at the university and within the Faculty of Science and Technology. We are here to hold your hand and walk you through the different subjects that we pursue in the Department of Life Sciences. Biology, of course, freshwater and the marine environment, ecosystems, biodiversity, biochemistry, microbiology and genetics. But at the end of the day, we really want to nurture you. We want you to be innovative and creative. And we have an amazing group of staff here at the university and in the Department of Life Sciences experts in their own areas in the very fields that I've just mentioned, you have made the right choice. You are coming to the Department of Life Sciences. It's where science is happening. Science is core to all the issues. Science solves problems. As we know with the COVID, we're looking to for the answers, scientists. And this is where you can get involved in research. These are not solving only environmental problems, but also economic and social problems. So we at the Department of Life Sciences are training you to solve real world problems, to go out there and make a difference. Welcome to the Faculties Department of Chemistry. My name is Richard Fairman. Behind me are timeline photos, what we can see of crystals growing. And I'm going to tell you about what happened yesterday, what's happening today, and what's likely to happen tomorrow. Three years after this report, the UWI was born. An initial batch of students here and here graduating is our earliest native chemistry professor, Wilfred Chan. I sat in his lectures, not because I'm that old, but because the UE at 72 is quite young. Oxford, for example, is 922. Let's look at something happening today in Provence, France. At 100 foot tall, 100 foot wide, this huge device is a tokamak or fusion reactor intended to make energy just like the sun. This computer model is to sub-millimeter precision to simulate the tooling. And here are the first of the real parts being installed. The building is almost 25 stories tall the tokamak itself will be below ground level, several stories into the basement. You can see a few hard hats down there, and all of this is to do this. Just five grams of hydrogen would make the 500 megawatts of power. But this would hardly match our sun. It provides enough energy in one hour to power all human activity for a year. With current solar panels, Dubai is already at the solar tipping point making electricity cheaper than from oil. Today, our researchers in your chemistry department are trying to develop even more efficient solar cells. Who doesn't enjoy the sights and sounds of an azure sea coming onto an empty shore? In many places though, reality is a little different. The good news is that plastic eating bacteria might provide brand new technologies for solving the ocean's plastics problem. In studying marine microplastics, we are also well on board with tackling this global concern. I wouldn't recommend you eat plastic yourself, but have you heard of the meatless burger? It is a beautiful iron containing molecule, and it's essential for pretty much life on Earth. The heme in your blood grabs the oxygen from your lungs and carries it all around your body. And the amazing thing about heme, besides doing all that sort of stuff that enables life to exist on Earth, is that it's also what makes meat delicious. We were the 
first to discover that heme is what makes meat taste like meat. In our chemistry department, food looks like this. This is how we cook it. This is how we stack it in a salad. But chemists are also expert at stacking molecules. Today you can make parts layer by layer with minimum waste and even a combustion chamber like this one out of materials chemistry. Rocket science is in fact full of chemistry with methane fuel. These are just some of the equations that would need solving. Mother Nature also stacks carbon in sheets. These gentlemen found this out, giving incredible strength in one direction, more than 100 times that of steel, and fantastic electrical properties as well. Graphite materials are already being used in the next generation of long-life, high-power batteries. Here, you can see the fresh-faced CEO of that company, and as is the case nowadays, this could literally be you. Down at the nanoscale, we are looking for properties that derive from structural features. Consider these coatings of extremely water repellent or hydrophobic chemical groups at work. And at the molecular level, we are also exploring compounds that change color in the presence of specific others, an area of chemistry called supramolecular chemistry. And now we look at tomorrow, your days ahead with us. It starts in the department with our secretary, Ms. Shannon Peters, the main lecturers for introductory chemistry. You will meet the lab manager and the technician, the team in NMR, and of course, the fun gang in the office who tend to student matters. We like to imagine you can do something for you like this. Kids in classes are cute, but it's not often you get to watch a baby see her parents clearly for the first time. So that's what you look like. See you soon. So you got a little welcome there from all our heads of department and the Dean of the Faculty, Dr. Brian Coburn. Now I would like to welcome the Dean back just to give a few words of support in these times that are quite difficult. You would have heard the Prime Minister's address and you may be wondering what would happen in terms of your classes this semester. So I invite our Dean to take the stage and to give you a few words of encouragement and enlightenment. Dean Thank you, Dr. Dyer, and good morning again to everyone. So my recorded message is less than a week old, but already it's out of date. Uh, my media people asked me if I wanted to change it, but I opted to leave it as it was to illustrate a particular point, which is that these times that we live in demand that, that we be more comfortable with uncertainty. That's a tough gig, I know, but it's, it's going to be a requirement going forward. Specifically, I wanted to mention on the subject of practical exercises that there will be no in-person practicals until further notice. Uh, all practical exercises will take um, one of perhaps three approaches those that can be offered in virtual mode will be offered as virtual exercises. Uh, some exercises can be offered as remote exercises for you to conduct within your home. Other exercises because of the equipment and or uh, materials required will have to be deferred until it is safe to bring you back on the campus for in-person exercises. Whatever the approach we take of prime concern remains your safety, as well as the quality of the educational experience that we're offering. To that extent, we are committed to ensuring that your learning outcomes continue to be addressed. The other thing I wish to mention here is that uh, under our modified protocols, you will get out what you put in. 
this continues to be the same as it was when all of our interactions were in person. So I want to encourage you now to listen to the, the remainder of our presentations. Um, I don't want to consume much time. I want to allow as much time as possible for you to ask questions. Welcome and best wishes for a great experience here at the Faculty of Science and Technology with the University of the West Indies. Thank you. We thank our Dean for those words of encouragement. And now we move on to a presentation that details some of the things that you need to know as you come into our faculty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a PowerPoint presentation with you and I will talk you through each of those steps. So we start. You are at the Faculty of Science and Technology, of course. And this is our orientation. And again, I repeat, this orientation session is designed for undergraduate students who are starting this year. There are several degree programs in the Faculty of Science and Technology, and you would have heard about them from some of the heads of department, but not all. So here, I just have a list of what we call the majors and minors that you can do with us. So there are possibilities of doing either one or two majors. Okay. So are we with you? Yes. So as I said before, there are degree programs in the Faculty of Science and Technology, and you can do either one or two majors. And here is the list of majors that you can do. So you have chemistry, of course, which will be in the Department of Chemistry. So you can do a major in chemistry, a major in industrial chemistry. And those are the minors that are not bolded, analytical chemistry, materials chemistry, chemical biology. And if you have selected chemistry, you will hear more about this when you attend your departmental orientation. So I won't speak more about that. The majors in the Department of Mathematics and Statistics are, of course, mathematics or statistics. And in the Department of Computer Science and Information Technology, you can do majors in either of those options. And you can also do majors in physics and electronics and minors in several other things, environmental physics, material science, as you would have heard, medical physics and bioengineering. And from the Department of Life Sciences, you can choose a major in biology, biochemistry, or environmental science. Now your offer letter would have specified at least one of these majors if you were not doing what we call a special option. And the minors, you may be wondering, well, how come I didn't get to select that? Well, minors are things that you choose when you reach your second year and beyond. So you don't have to consider yet, what minor will I do? Right now, you will be focused on what major I am going to do. And that's what you would do in your first year with us. Oh, so the special options. What are those special options that I mentioned? Well, sometimes students come to us with a firm idea of what they want to do. So they know already, all I want to see is chemistry and I would like to open a business. So I want to do the degree chemistry and management where I can do both specialties. Or you may have a firm idea that computer science is what you would like to see and nothing else. So you may choose to do computer science special degree or information technology special, or perhaps computer science with management, where you mix both computer science and management in order to enter a career where you open your own company and use computer programming. If you had chosen to see only mathematics, you may have opted for the mathematics special degree, or you may decide, well, I want to be an actuary. So you may have chosen actuarial science, which is also a special degree. Statistics and economics is a degree that's tailored for people who are interested in economics, but need to have a statistical background in order to do proper data analysis. 
Then we have environmental science and sustainable technology. For those of you who are interested in saving our world and the environment we live in. And lastly, biomedical technology, which is a special option that started a few years ago and is quite popular among our students. So by special options, what I mean is that it is a tailored program. So the courses that you have to do are very specific. There's little room for electives. Whereas in the slide before that I mentioned where you can do majors and minors, there's a lot more option what you can do and you can mix and match quite a few things. In fact, if you chose to, you could decide to do a major out of faculty. So for example, sometimes a student may want to do something like mathematics and maybe a minor in music or psychology. And that is possible with us. If you are in the Faculty of Science and Technology, though, you must have a major at least with us. So now we need to talk about the faculty booklet. This is an important point for you all. The faculty booklet is contained online here. I have a link to the faculty booklet and you can find it on the FST. And when I say FST, I mean Faculty of Science and Technology. The, the, the FST uh, website has that booklet, has a link to that booklet and I've written it down there. And it contains all the important UE regulations that you need to know, because sometimes there are things that you would like to do and things that you would like to do and can't do. And in the booklet, it specifies those options for you. And there's information on all the degree programs, including the courses that you will need to do in that booklet. So I do encourage you, read your faculty booklet, download it, take a look at it when you have a question. Let it be that first point of contact. Then you have the structure of the BSc general degree. For our new undergraduate students, what you are going to be doing right now are your introductory level courses. You notice here it says 24 credits. Well, each course normally has three credits. So if you have to do 24 credits, and I teach mathematics as well, so you can divide 24 by three and you realize that means eight level one courses. And we will talk later about what courses you need to do when you go to your departmental orientation, which I stress on because right now we are at faculty orientation, but there's a different orientation you will do, need to do later. And I'll talk more about that a little later on. So right now you are at introductory level and we hope that at the end of this academic year, that semester one and semester two, you would have completed your 24 level one credits and you would be ready to move on to what we call the advanced level where you have to do and complete 60 more advanced level credits in order to graduate. Now that's not all. Apart from the introductory level and the advanced level credits, you have the foundation courses, which make up nine credits. So there are three foundation courses that are specified for our faculty and you must complete all three of those foundation courses. So the minimum number of credits to graduate is therefore 93 credits if you add those numbers up. So the foundation courses that I mentioned, here they are. The first one is called Caribbean Civilization. As you can imagine, that's like history that you have to, to do. Then scientific and technical writing, usually given in semester two, that's called Found 1105. And then the third foundation course is a mix of things, law, governance, economy, and society. Now notice I have here at the end, no foundation means no graduation. So you must have completed these foundation courses and you need to be careful with those codes. Yeah? Don't mix them up. Those are the precise codes that you need because there are other foundation courses on the campus for other faculties. So these are the ones that are specified for the Faculty of Science and Technology. So how many credits do I have to do? We talked about that already. I already said that one course is normally three credits. There are some courses that might be a little less. For example, there might be a lab course that might be 1.5 credit. And normally, if you are a full-time level one student, you would do between 12 to 15 credits. So again, you can just divide by three. So 12 divided by three is four. So you can do either four three credit courses or five three credit courses. In some programs, there is a specification of an extra credit course that you have to do. And that's in the Department of Mathematics and Statistics. But those are special cases. And you will hear more about that when you go to your departmental orientation. For full-time level two and three students, so that's when you reach to your second year, when you have completed this first year, 
So then you do between 12 to 16 credits per semester normally. And if you are registered as a part-time student, normally the maximum you can do is nine credits. So that translates to three, three credit courses. So what about the GPA system? Now you're going to hear the term GPA several times during your stay with us. And it's an important concept and it means grade point average. So what does that really translate to? So when you do a course, you get a mark in that course. Hopefully, you're going to get a mark that corresponds to an A+. Plus. That would be fantastic. That's if your mark, your overall mark in the course is between 90 and 100. And then you get a, an A+. Plus. And you get what is called a quality point. Well, more than that, if you have an A+, plus, you get 4.3 quality points. So that's, that's really good. Then we see those grades that are down in red at the bottom, which we hope never to see on your transcript which is where you were not successful, unfortunately, in a course that hopefully will not be your case. So if you get between 45 and 49, that corresponds to what we call an F1, which has 1.7 quality points. If you get between 40 and 44, you get an F2, which is 1.3 quality points. And between 0 and 39, you get an F3, which does not query any quality points. Now, why am I harping on these quality points? Because when you calculate the total number of quality points and you divide by the total number of credits that you attempted, remember each course is three credits. So if you attempt three courses, you get nine credits that have attempted. You divide the total number of quality points by the total number of credits attempted to get that GPE, the grade point average. So here I have a little example for you. Suppose you were part-time and you ended up doing two courses only. So if those two courses were Bio 1262 and Bio 1263, each of those is a three credit course. And suppose I got an A plus in Bio 1262. So if you check back the table that I had before, the A plus is worth 4.3 quality points per credit. So if I do a three credit course, I will get three times 4.3, which is 12.9 quality points. Moving on, suppose I had done Bio 1263, which is also with three credits, and I got a grade C. As in the table before, a grade C corresponds to two quality points, and that's the number of quality points per credit. So therefore, you have to multiply that two by three to get the total number of grade points. So the total sum of grade points that I am getting this semester, if those were the grades that I got and those were the courses I registered for, would be 12.9 plus 6 divided by 3 plus 3. And that works out to 3.15 GPA or grade point average. So your grade point average, there are three different kinds, and each one of these is important to know. I know this is a little bit of an information overload, but hopefully you will take your time and go over this in a later time and remember the specifications that we have made here. So first, the semester GPA, which is basically the grade point average for your semester. Very easy to figure out. The degree or honors GPA, which you don't start until you start doing what we call advanced level courses when you reach to year two and beyond. So right now, the courses that you do will not go towards your degree GPA. Level one courses or introductory courses that you do in your first year do not go towards that degree GPA. And the third type of grade point average is what we call the cumulative GPA, which is the grade point average of every course that you have done over the course of the semester, uh, of the semester of every semester that you do here with us. My apologies. Cumulative means added up. So from the minute you start your studies with us, think that your cumulative GPA is building. Again, the degree GPA does not build until you reach year two and beyond. So your academic standing. So this is very important. If your grade point average in any given semester is two or above, we say you are in good standing. In other words, very well, you may continue without any restriction. If your grade point average is below two though, you go to what we call warning status, where we put a dean's hold on your account and that hold is to be able, for us to be able to call you in and tell you, you know, hey, you have to be careful. 
because if you continue in this way, you may get what we call the RTW status, which is the dreaded status, which we, I should take the smile off my face here as I see it. This means required to withdraw. So that's not something that we would like to see happen to any of our students. And that happens if your grade point average for the following semester is also under two. So again, we hope that this will not be your situation because as I said before, required to withdraw means exactly what it says, that you have to leave your degree program. So this is not what we would like for you. Now, GATE. I know that several people who are Trinidadian students will have access to this GATE funding and you may wonder what I have to do to qualify for this GATE. Now, it's very important that your cumulative grade point average, that's the grade point average of every single course you do from the minute you start your degree program, that grade point average has to be two or above in order to qualify for GATE funding. Now, if it is under two, that's where the problem starts. And that's what we don't want to happen to you because it means the GATE office will tell you that you don't qualify for GATE funding until that cumulative GPA goes back to two or above. Your honors or degree GPA. This is an important point here because when you finish your degree, we hope that you will have an honors GPA for a first class degree. That would be fantastic because that means that your employer would be quick to hire you. So the first class honors 3.6 to 4.3 GPA. And then we go down to what we call just a past degree, which is where you've graduated, you've managed to graduate, but you haven't graduated with honors. So you have first class, upper second, lower second, and pass. Those are the degrees you can get. Now, if your honors GPA is under two, it means that, well, you cannot graduate soon. Again, this is something that we don't want to see happen to you. So it's very important, as the Dean said, that you engage from the minute that you start your studies with us. It is your responsibility to get the best degree you can so that when you apply for a job or when you are ready to start your own business or your own company, you have the backing to be able to start that company with an honors degree. So what is the Dean's Honor Rule? This is something that looks very nice on a curriculum meeting, right, on your CV. So when you apply for a job, you need to have a CV. And if on your CV, you can say you are on the Dean's Honor Roll for the Faculty of Science and Technology, that's a fantastic thing for you because there's so many people who come out with degrees these days. So you need to distinguish yourself. And if you are on that Dean's Honor Roll, again, that's a plus. So this is something that's awarded on an annual basis. Foundation courses, co-curricular courses, these are things that you will hear about, co-curricular courses. Internship programs, audited courses, and summer courses do not count towards the Dean's Honor Roll. So that's just for you to know. And full-time students must pass a minimum of 15 faculty credits. So that means 15 credits within the Faculty of Science and Technology. So as I mentioned before, it is possible to do minors or majors out of our faculty. But those courses do not count towards the Dean's Honor Roll. The council was your GP, but not the Dean's Honor Room. So your semester GPA must also be at or above 3.6 to qualify. So we hope to see many of you on that list at the end of the video. So suppose you want to contact us. So right now we are in a virtual mood. That means that you're going to need to send a lot of emails to people. And there is a standard way of sending an email. And it's important that you know that you should use your UE student email address. Some lecturers, some staff members that are in different departments across the, the, the campus, sometimes their email filters may place your email as a junk mail if it is not written from your UE student email address. Please make sure that when you correspond with us, you use what is called your UE student email address. And normally that is your first name dot surname at my.ue.edu. Now, sometimes there may be two people with the same name. So then you may see the number one or two after the surname. And in your letter, of course, you should state your address, the date that you are writing your letter, 
your student ID number, as I said before, sometimes people have the same name, but they don't have ever the same number. So numbers are important. I'm a mathematician, remember. So it's very important that you write your ID number in your email or your letter. Your mobile cell phone number, this is important to us in case we need to contact you. And of course, your signature. That's what makes it known as an official document from you. So if you do send a letter, please make sure you do sign it. And then the Dean's Office Student Matters. So this is where I work. I work at the Dean's Office Student Matters. I am, as I said before, the Deputy Dean of Undergraduate Student Matters. There are other Deputy Deans around for other functions, but I am the one that's responsible for all of you who have any issue or anything that you, you wish to clarify, you can try to email me. If I cannot answer, I can put you on to someone who can. So this is my email address, fstdeputydean.ug at sd.ug.edu. And this email address is on the website. It's in the faculty booklet. So if you forget it, don't worry, you can find it easily. Just search for it. The faculty office, this is my extension, 84507. And then the student services unit. Now these are people that are there to help you. And sometimes they can answer things that you wouldn't believe they can answer in terms of student services, the things that you need, the problems that you face on campus. Sometimes you need to ask a question and you're not sure who to ask. Well, we have an administrative assistant, Mrs. Tara Suku, very knowledgeable and very helpful. So if you send her an email, she can help you. And this is her UE extension number. Then the secretary of student matters, this lady is also very helpful. She's usually at the front desk. Unfortunately, you won't be able to meet her until the campus opens up to students. But when you eventually do meet her, I'm sure you'll be happy to meet her. Very pleasant ladies both. And I hope that if you do have any issues, you contact them. So we look forward to seeing you graduate. All these rules and regulations and GPAs and honors, well, all these are, this is information, but what we would like to see is a smile on your face when you graduate, when you have successfully completed an honors degree with us, and then you're successful in your career. So we want you to enjoy that UE experience that you have with us. So here is the UE website that I keep talking about. That's sta.ue.edu slash FST. FST meaning, remember, the Faculty of Science and Technology, the best faculty. You have chosen the best, welcome and well done for doing it. So at this point in time, you have over the most boring part, which is all those things that I needed to see. And now I am sure you want to hear from students. Don't you want to hear from students? That's important. Our students, so which are the students that we are going to let you hear from? So we're going to have another video where our students, and first of all, it is important to know that as registered students, you automatically become a member of what we call the Guild of Students or the Students Guild. And that is a body that communicates for you to senior members of staff and academic staff and senior members of campus management. So they are the go-betweens. They are the ones that you need to know. They are the ones that can assist you. If you have a question and you don't want to ask a staff member, if you don't want to ask me, you can ask your guild council member. So the guild council comprises of an executive, hall chairpersons for people staying on the halls here on campus, faculty representatives and special committee chairpersons. And the FSD guild representative for the academic year 2020 and 21, 21, so this coming academic year is Mr. Michael Joseph. So you are going to hear from Mr. Joseph first. He is pursuing a degree in computer science. Of course, that's at the Department of Computing and IT. And he's the first person you will see in the video clip. After him, you will see some short video tips from what we call our peer advisors. Now, what is a peer advisor? The FST, Faculty of Science and Technology Peer Advisors, are student advisors from our faculty. And they have volunteered that their time and service to help to build a better, student-friendly campus for you. So they have certain tips. I won't tell you what it is that they're going to say. They will say it to you. And they have pledged to provide the leadership. They have pledged to serve as role models 
and most importantly, they have pledged to serve you, the student body. So if you do wish later on to join those peer counselors, you can apply, right? And you will hear later, you will hear more about that. I won't focus on that right now. The next thing that is part of the video that you will see is our FSD timetable coordinator, Mr. Ramesh Pingal, and he will teach you how to access, how to read, and how to generate a working timetable schedule, which is important. You have these classes to go to. You need to know what is your timetable, what is my timetable, because each timetable is special to you. So he will explain that to you. And lastly, so notice there's plenty of things you're going to see. So the last bit is testimonials from our past, some of our past FSP students, and they will provide us with insights, their own personal insights into how this faculty has impacted and changed their lives. So enough from me, time for you to listen to some students. So let's put on that video. Good afternoon guys, my name is Michael Joseph and I'm your faculty rep for the Faculty of Science and Technology. I want to say welcome, welcome to FST, welcome to our family. You are now one of us. So adorn your yellow and be proud of your faculty because you are part of one of the biggest and most amazing faculties built of people from all walks of life, diverse, from your lecturers to your colleagues. So welcome, welcome to the family. Why I choose FST and by extension my degree of computer science because when you think of the future, when you think of where the world is going and needs to go, you think of science and technology. You think of STEM, science, technology, engineering and mathematics and our faculty is three of those four. We are the future. You are the future. So welcome. And one of the benefits of having me as your faculty rep is because I am here and I'm committed to you. I'm here to work for you. So if you see me on campus, stop and say, hey Michael, where's he seen dog? I had this idea for this and we'll discuss it and we'll make it happen because our faculty is great and with your help, we can make it even greater. Thank you. Step number one. We've all experienced the new student problems of getting lost on campus, so do not be afraid to ask a stranger for help. You we students are friendly, so don't worry, we all get lost and happens to the best of us. Tip number two, walk with an umbrella if you don't want to get sunburned. Tip number three, in UWE, there will always be some love words holding hand, taking up the whole corridor and walking slow, slow, slow. So just walk around them. Don't sign up for 8 o'clock class if you can't commit to it. Missing just one class is more addicted than a real deal from KFC. In this video, I will show you how to access, navigate, and interpret the UWI timetable and show you how to prepare your schedule for the courses for which you've been registered. There are two simple ways to access the online timetable and the first way is by logging on to the UWI St. Augustine homepage and on the, on the left click on current students and by clicking on that link that will take you into another page and on the right side of the page you would see a timetable link once you click on that timetable link you will get the timetable that is currently uploaded and, pre and present on the online system at this point in time. So at this time, the summer 2020 timetable is on, but the semester one 2020-2021 timetable should be available by August 21st. So uh, to be able to see the courses on the semester one 2020-2021 timetable, uh, you will need to get the appropriate link for uh, semester one. 
Another way you can access the online timetable is by if you're trying to access the timetable on your mobile or even using a PC, you can also try this other alternative method. So using one of the popular search engines, type in UWI timetable. This will carry you into the timetable my SDA link. Once you click on that link, you would see the same sort of timetable page, the first page that is of the timetable. And here it takes you back to the summer 2020 timetable because that's the uh, current timetable that is presently online. When the semester one 2020-2021 timetable is available, you would see a page like this instead. So the first page of the timetable will have semester one 2020-2021 timetable. There are a couple of things that I need to point out on this page, and that is, notice that there is a last posted date here. Since the timetable is regularly updated, and the timetable is quite dynamic, to know if you are looking at the most updated timetable, check the last posted date since you last visited, and you would know if there are any changes. Uh, the timetable, as I said, is updated quite frequently. So for updates, you can check here um, on to know if you are looking at the most updated timetable. The semester one 2020-21 timetable link by, by Clicking on that link, it takes you directly into the next page, the second page of the timetable. So by clicking on that link, you would see a page like this. And you would, what you would notice here is uh, the Cellcat Web Publisher. This is the software that is used to create the UWI timetable. So this is the second page of the timetable. And then you can click on either timetable finder at the top here or in between here to get you to this next page, the third page of the timetable. Look for the open timetable finder link and once you click on that, you will see all the courses that the campus is offering for semester one. All the courses are arranged in alphanumeric order and to find a particular course for which you've been registered, for example, BIO 1262, you will need to scroll down on the scroll bar on the right. If we scroll down, you would see BIOL 1262 Living Organ Organisms 1. By clicking on that link, you would actually see the timetable or the schedule for BIOL 1262. And this is what a typical uh, class schedule for a particular course would look like. So here I'm using the semester 1, 2019-2020 uh, timetable. So here I am using the semester one 2019 2020 timetable to illustrate what a typical uh, typical course may look like so at the top here each column represents one hour and these are from 8 to 9 9 to 10 10 to the 11 and so on the rows on the left tells you the day of the week um, for this particular course schedule now, a typical course may comprise different sessions, lectures, tutorial, lab, and field trip. A lecture is simply a session, a classroom session, where topics are introduced about a particular um, course. So a lecture is a session, a classroom session, where topics are introduced um, for that particular course. So it's more of a sit down type session where you listen to a lecturer um, explain um, is about a particular topic. Then there are tutorials. A tutorial session is an interactive session. It's a problem solving session where you may ask questions about the lectures or a particular problem paper that may have been given to you uh, to do for that tutorial session. Labs are practical sessions, and these are done in our laboratories. And a field trip is a particular out-of-classroom type session, which may be done either in out of the classroom or off on campus or off campus. So for BIOL 1262, each of these uh, boxes represent a particular event. 
at the top of the box, you will see the type of event. So here is a lecture for BIA 1262. Another type of session is a tutorials. This is a tutorial type session and notice that they are color coded as well. The boxes are color coded. And here is a lab session for BIA 1262. Below the type of session, you will see the weeks of the semester that particular lecture is running for. And in this case, you would see the lecture, the lecture for BIA 1262 runs in week two, four, six, eight, and 10. Even weeks only. Below that, you would notice the date, that is the actual dates from the start date to the end date of all the lectures for that particular um, session or that particular event. And below that, you will see the course code for the particular event. And underneath that, you will see the room allocation for that particular course. Uh, for some, in some sessions are uh, uh, provided in multiple format. For example, this tutorial here, this tutorial class, there are several tutorial sessions and classes you can attend. Here is tutorial one, label T1, T2, T3, and you have up to T6 here. For multiple lab streams, these will be labeled as L1, L2, and L3, and so on. So here is an L2 lab. For courses where there are multiple lecture streams, such as in MATI 1142 and MATI 1115, there may be groups of lectures. So if I go into the MATI 1142 timetable from last year, you would notice that there are three groups of lectures for MATI 1142. Notice Monday and Tuesday, G1. Monday and Tuesday for G2 and on Monday afternoon for G3. So each of these groups are different groups for the same lecture. Once you've been assigned to a group, you need to stick to that group and attend only those lectures associated with that group to which you've been assigned. Associated with each of these group lectures, there is an associated tutorial session or tutorial class and for G1, you have G1, T1, and you can see here G1, T2. And these are two tutorial sessions or classes for the G1 lectures. In addition to tutorials, some uh, courses have associated with them help desks. These are drop-in sessions where you can drop in any time to get assistance. When I say any time, I mean the times um, indicated on the timetable. You can drop in and get help on a particular math problem in this case. So please make sure that you, you make uh, very useful, um, make good use. So please ensure you make good use of the math tutorial, math help desks. So if you go back now to BIO 1262, you would notice that BIO 1262 has a lecture on Monday, Tuesday at 10, and on Wednesday at 8. So these are the lectures here. Now, since most of our classes will be conducted online, in those instances where classes are conducted online, the only change to the timetable will be the room allocate, there will be no room allocation and there will be a note indicating online. So let me illustrate that with um, Chem 1066. So here you're seeing an online lecture for uh, Chem 1066 and here's an online um, tutorial for uh, Chem 1066. Notice that there is no, there are no room allocations for these um, events and therefore you have to access these events online at the appropriate day and time. So if I go back to BIO 1262, for BIO 1262, you need to attend three one-hour lectures per week for six weeks, one lab session for six weeks, and one one-hour tutorial for six weeks. Why I'm saying six weeks is because BIO 1263 runs complementary with BIO 1262. So here you can see the BIO 1263 timetable and notice that they run at the same days and times as BIO 1262, except that BIO 1263 runs in even weeks. Now to get the balance of the uh, 
schedule for this particular course, BIOL 1262, you would have to scroll down for the rest of the week. You would notice Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The last event for BIOL 1262 for the week is on Friday, and these are lab sessions. So in total, there are four lab streams for uh, BIOL uh, 1262, L1, L2, L3, and L4, and you have seven tutorial streams. All you need to do is attend all your lectures for BIOL 1262 and 1263, select one class-free tutorial session to attend, and to be uh, for, a, for a lab session, you would need to contact the department to be assigned a particular lab session. Uh, so as I said before, BIOL 1263 runs complementary with BIOL 1262, and here you can see that. And finally, notice that we've been through the entire schedule for BIOL 1262 and 1263, and notice that there are no field trip sessions for, this two, for these two courses. So it, the typical timetable for a student doing both BIOL 1262 and 1263, what you would notice here is for your personal schedule, you would have the lectures here indicated on Monday and Tuesday at 10, Wednesday at 8, for both BIOL 1262 and 1263. If you've been assigned a Monday lab, you will be attending this lab here on Monday afternoon, and then you have you, you would have been assigned or selected, you would have selected or assigned one tutorial session. And this one here is a class-free session. Notice that there are no clashes on this timetable. So for preparing your personal uh, schedule for all the courses for which you've been registered, first you need to do, what you need to do first is access the timetable for each course as we showed you earlier. Note all the elected days and times. These are compulsory sessions and classes that you must attend. Lectures with multiple groups such as MAT 1115 and MAT 1142 and 52, you would need to consult the relevant department to get assigned to a particular group um, for lectures. One would also need to consult the department, the relevant department for uh, being assigned for a lab as well as the tutorial class. Once you've uh, selected, you've included all your lectures, tutorial and lab sessions on your personal schedule, ensure that there are no clashes. If you have any clashes, you may need to recheck the course timetable to ensure that you find a session, whether it's a tutorial or a lab for which you have no clash. If you continue to have clashes, then you would need to contact the relevant tutor and department um, for that course for which you are getting the clash, and they should be able to assist. Once you prepare your timetable, your class-free timetable that is, for all the courses for which you've been registered, you would need to attend all the selected sessions um, for the entire semester. Now. So here is an example of a student, let's say, doing a BSc in biology. And if that student is registered for BIOL 1262 and 63, MAT 1115, Chem 1066, and FOUND, which is FOUND 1101, the foundation course, the timetable will look something like this. Your personal timetable time will look something like this. Here I've included all the BIOL 1262 and 63 lectures. The two Chem 1066 lectures, the two MAT lectures, in this case the student was assigned to G2 lectures. Here is the found 1101 lecture, which is on Wednesday afternoon. Then you put in your assigned lab for 1262 and 1263. And here we have MAT 1115. This is a computer lab session. Then you include all the tutorials and ensure that you have no clashes, BIOL 1262, CAM 1066, MAT 1115, and FAUN 1101. And then finally, you can include any help desk session um, you can attend on your uh, personal schedule for all the courses for which you've been registered. What you would notice here is that there are quite a wide spots, wide spaces here, where you can, which is pretty much your free time, where you can study 
and do other um, useful, um, useful stuff. For a student doing a BSc General with a major in Math and Physics, if the student is, um, is registered for COMP 1601, Math 1142, 52, and FIS 12, 21, and 22, your typical timetable may look something like this here, all the lectures for each of the courses, for each of the, uh, for each of the courses you've been registered, uh, COMP, Math, Physics. Then you include your lab sessions, include your tutorial sessions for each of the courses. Here's tutorial session for G2, Math 1142. And here is the uh, session for Math 1152, it's a G1T3 uh, tutorial. Physics tutorials are here for 21, 1221 and 1222. And notice that there are no clashes thus far. And one can include a help desk here. And notice again, there are quite a lot of white um, periods here for studying and so on. So with that, um, I hope I've been able to um, give you some useful information on how to access, navigate, and prepare your personal schedule for all the courses you are expected to register for. And with that, I'd like to say have a productive semester and year. And thank you very much for your attention. My name is Kevin Rajaram, and I am a proud graduate of the Faculty of Science and Technology from the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine campus. In 2013, I earned my bachelor's degree in mathematics, and in 2016, I earned my master's degree in statistics. I have been employed in the field of analytics and data science from 2014, serving in many functions, including business intelligence analyst, data scientist, analytics manager, and pricing manager. Currently, I serve as the Regional Business Intelligence Manager at a reputable telcos company within the Caribbean. Within this role, I've done a lot of exciting things that rely heavily on the knowledge acquired from my degrees. It can be as simple as understanding what the average customer spends their money on versus more complex computations, such as creating machine learning models that scores customers' likelihood to retain a product or conversely leave a product, or even feature scaling using dimensionality reduction techniques. These may sound complicated, but these were actually things that I've studied and learned while pursuing my degrees. Data has been dubbed the new oil, and the careers in the field have both grown in breadth as well as depth. Data scientists, machine learning engineers, data analysts, even business analysts are a few of the common titles that are given in the career space, but they've delved even more into leadership roles with chief data scientists and chief decision scientists leading the helm of companies' ability to make decisions. The analytics realm is growing more and more every day. And one thing that has served me well and definitely differentiated me in the space was my deeper knowledge of mathematics and statistics. I'm very grateful to have pursued these degrees as they have directly contributed to the success I've had in the world of wood. If you are like me and enjoy using data to solve problems, then I strongly encourage you to continue pursuing degrees offered by the Faculty of Science and Technology as the foundation and advanced knowledge given from those degrees are invaluable. Hey everyone, my name is Christopher Joseph and I got my bachelor's degree in computer science at the University of the West Indies. I currently work as a software engineer at Vertana, a company based in Trinidad and Tobago. The work we do at Vertana is unique. I would say it's unique to Trinidad and even to the Caribbean. We collaborate with Silicon Valley companies to produce robotics software as an outsourcing firm. What's cool is that we're always hiring, so make sure to apply on our website. UWE really helped prepare me for my work life. For example, they gave a lot of exposure to version control software, such as Git, which I use in my work like every day. 
They also gave exposure to a variety of software applications and lessons in critical thinking and best software practices. They also gave group projects which encouraged collaboration, which is critical in a workplace environment. These all help lay the foundation of what I use and build upon every day in my work life. I'd like to thank Yui for giving me this opportunity to talk about how they prepared me for my life, for my career at Vertano. And I'd like to see more Yui graduates apply. Thank you. Okay, so we're back to me now. So that was just a brief video presentation from some of our students. And I hope that after that presentation, you are able to find what your personal timetable is and that you have some idea of what you can do with one of our degrees after you listen to some of our past students and their personal experiences. So now what we are going to do is just close off this presentation with a few important tips and we're going to try to answer some of the questions that you've been asking on the chats. So just give me a minute, please, and let me share my screen with you so that you will see what it is that I'm talking about. Okay, so what we need to do now, now you know how to first decide what, what it is that upper letter says to you, what program you're doing, and now we need to see how you can continue this process, which is a process of registration, financial clearance, and then starting your classes. So what's next? That's what we have to find out. What's next? So, okay. There are several things that you need to take note of. On the faculty website, you will see links to academic advising. We've been receiving a few questions. Will classes be recorded? Now we have a few technical difficulties and it's not easy for us to send answers right now, but if you do have additional questions, please feel free to share it with us at the FSD undergraduate email address, which later on I will point out. And yes, everything is going to be virtual as the Dean would have pointed out. Academic advising forms, I will mention as well, and changes in degree options. So these are some of the questions that have been arriving to us. So now you have completed your faculty orientation. So what you should do next is perhaps take a look at the FST checklist. And you may be wondering, well, what is the FST checklist? Where do I get that? So if you take a look now, to see where. Where can I find the checklist? seen what you have to do is actually check the website and then on the website you can find that checklist so what is that checklist going to tell you what you have done so far is that you have attended the FSD online orientation session we've had a few technical glitches as can be expected so this time we're doing it like this and the next thing that you have to do is attend your departmental orientation session so after you have attended your departmental orientation session where several of your questions will be answered because many of you have program specific questions or doubts about courses and whether you're in the right place and so forth. So you, you do need to attend that departmental orientation session. Please note that the faculty orientation is not enough, right? You've only just started the process. After you've attended your departmental orientation session, then you can check the FSD new student welcome page for information. So just check the UV website, look for the Faculty of Science and Technology. And then from there, you can see a link to academic advising. Now each new student, and we're talking here, 
once again, I stress about the undergraduate students. Each undergraduate student has to go through academic advising. And it's going to take place in a virtual format. So you must go to that website and get that link so that you can fill out that academic advising form. And that's going to help you to determine what courses should I do? Also, am I in the right program? Do I want to change programs? All these questions will be answered for you as you fill out that form. So you register for your courses. Once you've identified what those courses should be through your student portal, you make payments for your courses online or at Republic Bank, and then you obtain financial clearance. So financial clearance is essential because that's going to make you your registration final, right? So only after notice, I, we didn't say just pay, you have to pay and then verify that you have financial clearance. So the university must see copies of those receipts that you get. And then after you do all of that, that's when your timetable, you check to make sure that you have all your class schedules correct so that you register for the courses and that you know when you have to attend your courses. So you need to understand this process that we're talking about. So this is, again, I know I'm repeating myself, but we need to make sure that you understand what you're doing right now is university faculty orientation. So that's the faculty of science and technology. And what you have to do next is your departmental orientations. For example, if your offer letter said biomedical technology, that means you belong to the department of physics. So you would have to attend the physics orientation. So if your offer letter said, for example, that you were going to be doing physics as well as mathematics, please note that you would have to attend both sessions, both the Department of Physics and the Department of Mathematics. The online academic advising, this is advising on which courses that you have to do. That starts on Wednesday, the 19th of August, 2020. And this is mandatory. Please make sure that you do your online academic advising, because that's the only way you can get registered. Then you do your online registration. So this includes actually adding those courses that are specified in academic advising to your, what we call your university transcript through your student portal. So that is a very important step because without that, you're not registered for any courses. So you have to identify your courses make sure they're the correct ones, and then make sure that they arrive on your transcript. And last but not at all least, financial clearance, because after you, you've paid your, your necessary fees, mandatory fees, and you do all your applications for GATE or whatever it is that you're doing, you have to submit your financial documents to the UE Bills 3 section, because you need to prove that you've done that and that you've met your financial obligations. So here we have a little chart that's available on the website and this allows you to double check to make sure that you've done everything, right? So what we don't want is that after this session today, you leave saying, well, right, I'm registered. No, you're not registered. You have done your faculty orientation. So at this point, you are at what we have here, start one faculty orientation, check, you did that. So now you have to decide, well, what department do I belong to? If you're doing environmental science, you belong to life sciences. If you're doing computer science, of course, you belong to the Department of Computer Science and IT and so far. So after that, if you do have questions, you can contact us, right? Notice that all the links that are here, as, as written here, are clickable. So you can just click on it and you'll get information about how to do these steps. You watch the basic video that's here. So check that list here. Click on that and you'll see a video that explains what you have to do. You complete your academic advising form, which is what I said, that's available from Wednesday the 19th. And then you have to wait because it takes a while for us to process and remove the hole so that you can register. At that point, right, you have to now wonder Remember I said student portal and you may be wondering, what is a student portal? Well, if you click on the link, you will see. And then you watch a basic video that we have here. You register for your courses, you pay your fees and you get financial clearance and that's it. At that point, you check your timetable and you start your classes. So if you have any questions about this process, we are hoping that everything that's available on this diagram with all the links that we've placed here 
the videos that are informing you will make up for the fact that you cannot come on campus to speak with us in person. So we have tried to make it as easy as possible for you so that it is very simple for you to follow this process and so that you do not miss out any of the essential steps. So this is your, what we call the FSP year one guide. So it's located on the welcome new FSP student page along with that checklist that I had before. And it includes all the clickable links with information in each step and you must complete the entire process. So if you miss out one of these steps, it means that you can't move on, of course, to the next step. So please be careful to follow these things. And if you have any questions, any concerns, you can contact us and we will try to assist you. So here is your point of, of, of help then. Suppose I don't understand what I just saw there or I click on the link, but I, I don't quite follow. What do I do? Well, the first thing you can do is email. And here I have in this light blue FST undergraduate at sta.ue.edu. That is an email that you can send. Just write your question there. Be as detailed as you can, and we will try our best to assist you. Or if you wish, you can try to contact us via phone. I know some people don't like to call because sometimes phones are busy. But you can try to call us as well, and we will try to assist you that way. Then you can contact the specific department via these email addresses that have been set up, especially now that everything is virtual. We are trying to have our support system so that you can send an email and get assistance. So these are support emails for each of the department and these email addresses are monitored daily, multiple times to make sure that none of you have unanswered questions. So these departmental emails are important because sometimes the question that you have is a departmental concern. If you have a question about a course or how it will be done, or whether you should do a particular course, perhaps you should ask your department because they are the ones who know the programs better than we do here even at the Dean's office. So we would like you to enjoy your stay with us. So here at this time, what I want to do is to draw your attention to a link for a feedback survey that's at the bottom of your screen. I'm hoping that you're able to see that. And it's a very short survey because your feedback is important for us. The first five students, so here I have a little bit of a competition, the first five students that complete and submit the survey will receive one of our FSP water bottles upon their first visit to campus. When will that be? Well, we hope it will be soon. But of course, it all depends on the COVID pandemic. And we hope that you and your families are safe. We thank you for choosing us. At the Faculty of Science and Technology, we are happy to be part of your life journey. And it is our hope that you'll stay with us, even though it is virtual right now, that later on, when you can come on campus and you can meet us in person, you will be able to continue your experience that you started online. So we thank you all for listening. We thank you all for being patient with our minor technical difficulties that we had throughout the session. As I said before, it's the first time we're doing this. We had a few challenges, but hopefully we did manage to get that information that you needed. And we do look forward to meeting you in person very soon. Thank you all. And I wish you a pleasant rest of the day and an enjoyable and hopefully a hiccup free registration process. So remember the next step for you, step two, departmental orientation. Thank you and have a good day.